Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to tomorrow. There's a whole bunch of rocket launches that I want to talk about in detail today, so let's just get right into it. This is your space pod for October 19th, 2016. So first off, we have two Taikonauts from China who successfully launched in their Shenzhou 11 capsule on a Long March 2F rocket either on Sunday or Monday, depending on where you were in the world. This launch took place at 2330 Coordinated Universal Time on Sunday, October 16th, but the local time was 7.30 a.m. on Monday, October 17th, local Beijing time. This launch took place from the Jiquan Satellite Space Center, and as I said, on board were only two Taikonaut crew members. The Shenzhou 11 capsule can hold three crew members, but the reason that they only took two up on this mission was because they wanted to bring along more supplies for a long-duration human spaceflight. China is hoping to beat their previous human spaceflight record, which is 15 days, and the current schedule for this mission is going to be 33 days. After a 10-minute rocket ride, the Shenzhou 11 spacecraft was successfully put into low Earth orbit and quickly deployed its solar panels to collect power. Now, the two crew members for this particular mission were announced to the public less than 24 hours before the launch itself, and it consists of a veteran Taikonaut and a rookie Taikonaut on his first spaceflight. The veteran is Jing Haipeng, who served on two previous missions, Shenzhou 7 and Shenzhou 9. And then the rookie is Chen Dong, who, like I said, this is his first space flight. Now, just two days later, the Shenzhou 11 spacecraft was able to rendezvous with the Tiangong 2 module and successfully dock with the module automatically. Now, we were supposed to get footage from a sub-satellite that would be recording the docking from a different perspective, but I haven't been able to find any footage of that. But there is quite a bit of footage of the, the different cameras that are on the Shenzhou 11 and Tiangong 2 modules. And this took place on October 19th. The docking was at 1924 Coordinated Universal Time. And within just about three hours, they were able to enter into the lab and wave at the cameras. Now, the two Taikonauts have quite a few tasks ahead of them for their month-long journey at this space station. And first and foremost, they're going to be setting up a lot of equipment and experiments that they will be conducting themselves and future visitors might be doing. And when they're not doing these science experiments, and once they've finished setting up the hardware that they need, they're going to be doing a lot of public outreach, and they're even going to be special correspondents for the Chinese news media, so that should be interesting. One of the big things about Tiangong 2 is it should have the capability to be refueled by a cargo ship which China is going to be sending to the space station sometime next year. And with that, that prevents Tiangong 2 from being in a situation like Tiangong 1 is right now. And that situation is that Tiangong 1 is out of control. And the Chinese space agency recently announced that they have pretty much figured out that it's going to be re-entering the Earth's atmosphere sometime next year. They still don't have enough data as to have any sort of landing or crash predictions of what uh, zones it might come over, but hopefully it won't be uh, posing any risks to any humans anywhere, and the most likely scenario is that it would splash down over the ocean somewhere, or rather the pieces that uh, survive re-entry would splash down over the ocean. In any case, I'm really excited about this, and I hope that China continues to use the Tiangong 2 module for as long as they possibly can. It would be awesome if they even docked it to their future Mir-class space station that they're planning to build, although I haven't seen any sort of plans or ideas that in endorse that from the Chinese space agency, but that's just me wishful thinking. I think that we should use those, this hardware as long as possible. Do you think that they will try to use that module as long as possible or just get the goals that they need, complete the milestones that they need, and move on towards their Mir class multi-module station? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd also like to invite you to connect with us on all of our social medias, our Facebook page, our Tomorrow account, our Tomorrow subreddit, and of course our website, tomorrow.tv, where you can jump into the chat room at any time and have a conversation with fellow space enthusiasts. 
This is, of course, a crowdfunded show through Patreon, and I want to give a huge shout out to all of our wonderful and generous patrons who are enabling us to make this show. Without your guys' support, we would not be able to make these videos, and I, for one, am eternally grateful to each and every one of you. And tell your friends about us, and let's try to get more support. The more that we are able to make, the more videos that we're able to produce, and the more cool stuff that we're able to do. So if you would like to support the show, if you're not already, please visit patreon.com com slash space pod for more information. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark. I will see you on this week's live show and until then keep moving onwards and upwards everybody and I will see you in the future.